Good morning, Spartans. I'm Madeline Shotton. Thank you for joining us again for another Timeline broadcast. Missouri Baptist University has a rich history and heritage that spans over 50 years. MBU has existed with the great vision that Christ is the center of all things. The university has lived out that vision by providing students with Christian-based education that has led to the expansion of the campus in numerous ways. No university can thrive without strong and passionate leadership. We as a student body, along with faculty and staff, had the opportunity to take part in the inauguration of our seventh president, Dr. Keith Ross. Today is a special day here on Timeline because we have the honor and pleasure of having Dr. Ross as a special guest to talk about his new role as the president of MBU. Welcome, Dr. Ross. Good morning. Welcome to Timeline. Thank you for having me, Madeline. You bet. So we're going to jump right in. The inauguration was a success. Your presidency is official. So how does it feel to be the president of your alma mater? Well, I, it's a great feeling, and the inauguration went really, really well. And we had mm -hmm. had a couple goals with that. We wanted to we wanted it to be very uplifting, right. Christ honoring, and we wanted to be able to highlight MBU in Definitely. that process. And I think we did that really well. Um, but your question about uh, as being the seventh president of my alma mater. Mm -hmm. I mean, when I when I enrolled here in 1983 as a freshman and drove on the campus for the first time, I had no clue that this right. day was coming. So, right. <laughs> so in some ways, it's very surreal, mm -hmm. uh, but it's also very gratifying and rewarding. Mm -hmm. MBU's meant so much to me as, right. as a student, as an employee, and mm -hmm. so it's just a great honor to be able to serve and uh, continue on. Right, right. I bet, I bet. And how, how is your family adjusting to this oh, new job? Yeah, <laughs> it's, they, they really have enjoyed mm -hmm. this time. Right. Uh, I have one daughter who's in college mm -hmm. and, uh, and then of course my wife and, uh, but this last six months have been probably the busiest we've ever had in our lives. So, but it's been all in a good way. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. and Ginger has always been involved with the university gotcha. over the years. Mm -hmm. And so she's excited about, uh, uh, getting plugged in even more and getting to know students more. Mm -hmm. She has the gift of hospitality, so gotcha. she so this works really well uh -huh, for her uh -huh. too. She's a right. good it comes by my side and we compliment each other, and so that's a good thing. Right? Yeah, that's really good. She's very sweet. I've met her. I met her a couple times a few years ago. So yeah, yeah, really cool, cool. So what's the average day in the life of the president? Oh wow, you know I don't know if there's any average right. day. <laughs> right. uh, there's a lot going on. Um, you have you know sort of the normal course of business. Mm -hmm. You know you're answering emails right. and you're. Uh, attending meetings and things, mm -hmm. but then you have to have some time when you can think about things that are bigger and brainstorm, right. and so you want to bring people around you that mm -hmm. can help do that mm -hmm. and think about big ideas. Right. Uh, there's also the part about being off campus and talking about the school to at the Chamber of Commerce and at Rotary Clubs mm -hmm. and all of those kind mm -hmm. of things. Um, and then there's the other part of just sort of walking around campus and saying hello to students and getting to mm -hmm. know them. So it's very, every day is a little bit Diverse. I mean, there's different, different things mm -hmm. going on, and uh, a big part of a president's job too is is fundraising, and mm -hmm. so you're you have to be uh, cultivating and right, building right. relationships <laughs> to do that. So, mm -hmm. yeah, definitely, definitely. I think I think we as students don't we don't think about all that behind the scenes. Work. Yeah, we think, oh, you know, you're in your office and you're the president, and life is good, but right. you got a lot of that hidden stuff, yes. definitely. So, do you have a favorite part, or what's what's the best part of it? Um, I think the best part for me mm -hmm. is just watching students mm -hmm. succeed and it's being around them, whether it's at an athletic event mm -hmm. or a fine arts event or watching uh, them do a presentation even in a class. It's okay. just, it's, that brings it all home and mm -hmm. what, why we do what we do here. Right. And so that's my favorite part of it. I um, also like visiting and talking with alumni and hearing their stories. And mm -hmm. we have so many alums that are doing great things, um, not, even, not only in the city, but mm -hmm. globally. Right. And right. they're making a real difference in the world. And they started here just like uh, we did right. at <laughs> right. MBU. So. Uh, cool, cool. So how do you think your leadership will differ from past MBU presidents? Yeah, that's a great question. You know, I, I don't know. I, I think presidents are at institutions at different times for different mm -hmm. reasons. And so when right. I look back at the history of the school, mm -hmm. uh, for example, in the 1970s, the school had some, some financial challenges. And so we had a president who really addressed those. Mm -hmm. And then I had the pleasure uh, and good fortune to serve with Dr. Lacey for 23 years. And so when he came, uh, he really put into place a strategic planning process mm -hmm. that has guided us over these past years. And when you look back at it, you see all of the really good and excellent mm -hmm. things that were done mm -hmm. under his leadership. And right. so I don't know if I will lead differently. I'll lead in that uh, I think I can complement their leadership. Mm -hmm. And in moving forward, because higher education is changing so much, we're dealing with new ways of delivering education, 
Uh, the world's getting smaller, so our <laughs> students are, are, are having more and more opportunities mm -hmm. to study abroad, and so I need to be part of helping to push and facilitate cool. some of that. Yeah. All good things, all yeah, good things. Yeah. I think that's, that's about all the time we have. So um, thank you again for being here on Timeline with thank us. You. Now let's toss to sports. Here's Patrick. Thank you, Madeline. During last week's homecoming, we had a lot of exciting games to see on campus. There were wins all across the board. Starting off with football, the Spartans football team faced Trinity International University on last Saturday's game day. MBU was the stronger team from the beginning, leading already 28 to seven after the first quarter. With eight touchdowns combined by Chris Baldwin and Chase Brown, the Spartans finished with a final score of 56-23. Baldwin made history by eclipsing 1,000-plus rushing yards this season. Following an exciting game, offensive lineman Killian Love proposed to his girlfriend, making Saturday a day to remember. She said, yes. Oh, look at that. Men's and women's soccer finished both of their regular seasons last week. The women's soccer team won in a dramatic overtime game, one to nothing against Lindenwood Belleville. With this victory, the women's team finished their season as number one in their conference and claimed their spot at the national tournament in November. And of course, at the end, we want to honor our Athlete of the Week, who is Alyssa Matz from the women's soccer team. With her goal in overtime against Lindenwood Belleville, she ensured the Spartans the conference victory and helped to claim their spot at nationals in November. Congrats, Alyssa. And now back to you, Madeline. Thanks, Patrick. Now we all have an inside scoop of the life of our president. If you see Dr. Ross, be sure to stop and say hello. That's this week's Timeline Broadcast. I'm Madeline Shotton. Shine on, Spartans.